Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews. I'm going today to answer a few questions. A few people have asked questions about the new Free Sky Tyrannus or 9XD or whatever they call it. They want to know some things and so I'm going to go through some of the questions that people have posed in the comments of my last video and do my best to answer them. And this is what the Tyrannus looks like beside the Turnigy 9XD. Ah, which is obviously a radio a lot of people are going to be comparing it to even though the price points are quite different and the feature sets are different but they do run very very similar software the open rc or er9x software and if you want information on that if you want to know more about the software if you want to get the source code for the software for this radio you can get it online there's links in the description of this video you can go and have a look download all you like you can go to some forums which i've linked to which they discuss this radio and the uh, OpenRC ER9X software in detail so a lot of your questions could be answered there and I might not even have to answer them here but let's get on and answer some of the questions that people have posed first of all is this antenna removable well no it's not I'm afraid and that's a bit of an oversight I think because I know with the removable antennas if you want more range if you're doing some FPV in the standard one and a half to two and a half K you get from a free sky module isn't quite enough then you can throw a 5 dBi antenna it's a slightly longer one on there and you can get quite a bit more range it's quite useful to be able to do that of course the uh, Tyrannus offers the long range option there's a long range receiver which when used in conjunction with this transmitter will give you they tell us significantly increased range for those of us who like doing FPV with 2.4 gig radios I'll be testing that as soon as the long range receiver is available I don't think it's available yet they didn't send me one so I can only test what I've got speaking of receivers we'll have a look at the receiver that they did send the X8R it's this little tiny thing here and I'll also answer some questions on backwards compatibility okay this is the X8R it's a smaller receiver than the D8R2 which is the previous free sky telemetry receiver this is quite a big receiver compared to the new one and this one has a wealth of new features it has an rssi output it has an s bus output it also has eight normal channel outputs and it has another connector on here which is for the smart port which we'll be telling you more about that later when um, i do some more videos but this is basically yeah this is the little receiver it's you know smaller lighter and far more feature packed than the old one and this of course is the the old v8 receiver now as far as backwards compatibility goes the piece of paper that comes with the radio says that the tyrannus with its internal rf system that's the system that's actually built into it is compatible with the old d8 r version 2 receivers the v8 version 2 now this is a v8 version 1 so this will not work apparently with the standard tyrannus but you can get around that because of course in the back of the radio is this module slot so as it comes there's nothing in there it's just a plastic cover because you can actually fit any module you want in there any JR compatible module so you could even say hey I want to use my bind and flies buy yourself an orange DSM or DSMX module throw that in there and because it's a JR form factor it plugs in there and then through the software you can tell the Tyrannus not to use the internal 2.4 but use the one in the module so FreeSky say if you want to use these older receivers just use your existing FreeSky module and you can do that you can switch backwards and forwards through the software in the radio so that's quite cool it does provide a, a great deal of backwards compatibility whilst delivering a whole lot new functionality if you go to the new receiver so yeah good on you FreeSky for, for addressing that and making that possible and of course the little part fly receivers and that will also work under the same conditions so there you go and as we know the FreeSky 2.4 link is one of the most bulletproof on the market when I first reviewed the FreeSky 2.4 it was like a breath of fresh air compared to things like DSM2 and some of the other DSSS options on the market and I think my confidence in the product when I reviewed it has been basically reinforced by thousands and thousands of users all over the world who have said yeah this is bulletproof stuff but I'll be testing this to make sure that the new system which they're calling what do they call it the XJT system built into the transmitter the new XJT board in the transmitter I'll make sure that's as good as the old one if not better well there you go backwards compatibility yes it's a big yes and because it'll take a module and it has the inboard thing you can even have it set up to do DSM2 and free skies ACCST system at the same time so you don't have to keep plugging modules in and out because you can just switch between the internal RF and whatever module you have in there brilliant I love that really really good idea 
Now, somebody else also asked me about the sticks. How do they feel? Well, they're quad bull gimbal, what are they called? Quad bull bearing gimbals. And uh, I don't know, actually. I mean, they feel fine. They're beautiful. They're lovely. But I've never really found that much difference between stick units. I mean, even the, the 9XR, the sticks feel okay on, on that to me. I, don't, I just don't feel the difference. Maybe I'm just old and clumsy, but I don't feel too much difference. Although, hey, if they're throwing bull bearings in there, bull, bull races in there for free, then hey, I'm happy with that. There's certainly no downside to it. Um, these sticks are as good as the sticks on my JR9X, and they're as good as, the better than the sticks on the JR, JRXG8, actually. Let's get that JRXG8 and have a comparison here. Because, oh, excuse me, here we go, reaches down for the little bit dusty JR XG8. Now let's have a comparison here between these two radios. Obviously this is all futuristic and everything, but as far as sticks go, these, these are a little bit less, you can see these are, the springs are a bit lighter on these, but the difference in feel is pretty minimal. And I'd say, actually this feels a bit more plasticky, that the whole transmitter feels a bit lighter, a bit more plasticky. This feels a bit more substantial, and I don't know, perhaps I'm just used to my JR9X, but I, as I said before, I really like the form of this radio. And uh, it weighs, I think, 700 and something grams. So it's, it's not a light radio, but it's not so heavy you're going to need to use a Kevlar neck strap to stop it falling on the ground, which is very useful. So there you go. One thing that I, didn't, I wasn't very impressed with was the battery. Now, of course, it does come with a battery, which is a big plus, but it's a nickel metal hydride battery. This is the day of lithium, the era of the lithium. Nickel metal hydride batteries, meh, you know, pretty last decade. But hey, it'll work. That's, there's no doubt about that. It comes with a charger for this battery, that's fine. The other thing I don't like too much is the battery connector. What don't I like about the battery connector? Well, it's the, the way they've wired it, actually. You can see it has positive on one side, negative on the other side. Try and get this into shot here, I'm working a bit backwards. Positive on one side, negative on the other side, and the center pin is not used, which means if you insert that the wrong way around, if you take your battery out and you plug it in back to front, which people do, goodness me, they do it all the time, then it may fry your radio because the polarity will be reversed. Now I know why they've done this, because it's a balance plug. So you can use a two cell lithium balance plug and just plug that in from your battery. But I'd really like to have seen a foolproof way of connecting the battery because trust me, people will plug that in backwards. However, on the subject of batteries, it, they say it will take a two cell or a three cell lithium as well. So you can get a, a LiPo, transmitter LiPo, or you can do what I do, and I just grab one of these really, really cheap um, lithium ion phosphate batteries, uh, the Hobby King ones. They're really cheap, six or seven dollars, I think, next to nothing, 1500 milliampere hours. That's gonna be fine. The thing I like about these is you can recharge them from flat in just under an hour, so if you, go out flying and you find, oh, my battery's low, yeah, a few minutes on the charger and it's good enough for the rest of the day, probably the rest of the week, maybe even the rest of the month. So yeah, I will be changing out the uh, lithium, uh, the nickel metal battery for a lithium pronto after I've finished the testing. But I'm testing what I've been sent, not what I can do with it, not, not the improvements you can make, but what you actually get in the box. And it comes with nickel metal hydride battery with a little wall watt charger, which will probably take about seven years to charge the battery. Now, a lot of people have asked me, how many model memories does it have? Well, it has, I think standard, it has 60, and there is a micro SD card in the back here in the battery compartment that comes as standard with the radio. So you can basically use, uh, that card to, I guess, I haven't actually checked, but download models, put new models on there. And there is some software apparently, which I'll be testing out and doing a video on, which enables you to configure the radio from your PC, which will make life a whole lot easier for people who are not really into twiddling buttons and pushing clicky things on the front panel. Because as I said, one of the things that's probably a, a strong positive and a strong negative with the radio is that it uses the open RC or the you know, open source software for the radio. And that is great because FreeSky have actually issued a statement, a commitment to open sourcing their radios, the software in the radio, which is great because if you don't like the way the software works and you've got a few clues, you can go and fix it, change it, do whatever you like, or you can update it because the software can be updated as is the case with most modern computer radios now, but you don't need a fiddly program or anything. It's got everything you need to do the updating automatically on board. That is very, very good indeed. And that SD card will also work with your telemetry to do data logging. So you can log the data from your telemetry onto the SD card and then look at it later on your PC if you want to. Now that's pretty cool stuff, I like that. Very nice indeed. Another really good thing is that they've used just a nice clear black and white or monochrome LCD for the display. They haven't fallen into the trap of trying to make it really flash and whizzy and using a horrible color screen because 
Color screens just don't work in strong sunlight. Even the transflective ones, the really expensive transflective ones like you get on the top end Futaba radios, eh, they're just not as good, not as clear, not as legible as a simple monochrome LCD like this one. And this one I have to check because every time I move the stick the light comes on and I'm sure that must not be too good for battery life and well to be honest if I'm flying in sunlight I don't need the backlight on. I'm sure there will be a setting to change that in the firmware. I'll as I say, what I'm going to do is go through the firmware, spend a couple of days going through the firmware, finding out all the little tips and tricks and things that you can do and that'll make your life with the radio a whole lot easier. And I'll do a series of videos on those, some little tips and how-tos and so forth, because I, I'm pretty sure you, everyone is going to need that, unless you're already a heavy user of the, the freeware or the open source radio software.